Good afternoon, everyone, and uh, welcome to Voice of Armenians TV New York. The topic of our discussion today is uh, issue of domestic violence in Armenia, an important um, topic to discuss. I want to introduce our guest, uh, Anahit Ugurlayan, an assistant director at the BBB National Programs National Advertising Division and Deputy Director at the National Advertising Review Board. Marina Manukyan, the Head of the Family and Construction Law Department at Adli Law Group. And Ruben Stepanian, New York Divorce and Family Law Attorney, an Administrative Law Judge at New York City Office of Administrative Trials and Hearings. Welcome everyone. Anahit, I wanna begin uh, our conversation with you. Uh, there's been a committee formed to tackle this uh, difficult issue. And perhaps it is fair to say uh, maybe a taboo issue in our culture, specifically in Armenia, to look looked into a domestic violence in the country, in our motherland. Tell us how and why this committee was formed. Thank you, Haig, and thank you for, for having us to speak about this important topic. The committee began its work in earnest in March of 2020, right at the start of the pandemic, in response to the murder of a woman in Gumri at the hands of her partner, who also severely beat her 13-year-old daughter, ironically coinciding with International Women's Day. This was the fourth femicide in Gumri in 2020. After a flurry of emails to the Armenian Bar Association, our committee was soon formed. It consists of preeminent family law practitioners on the East and West Coasts, including a family court judge, attorneys who do not specialize in family law, and law students, all of whom were prepared to learn about the domestic violence problem in Armenia and find ways to combat it. The Armenian Bar Association has engaged in consistently outspoken efforts to raise awareness about domestic violence in Armenia and its repercussions. I grew up in Armenia myself, and um, no one ever spoke about this. You know, the understanding was that whatever happens behind closed doors should remain behind closed doors. Um, so no one really knew, even if, if it was an issue to begin with, or if it was how widespread it was. Uh, Ruben, this question is for you. How wide, how serious is this issue? How widespread domestic violence issue is in Armenia? Um, first, hi, thank you for having us. And I really appreciate that you are um, making an effort and highlighting this issue. Because the problem is widespread, I can, throw statistics at you, sure. One is I have one in, one in uh, four women in Armenia has experienced domestic violence. Um, and another alarming one is that it, during a sociological study, 76% um, of everyone who took the survey came back saying justifying domestic violence. And the survey was you know, taken by men and women. So it wasn't just like, oh, the men are you know, saying, oh, it's okay, you know? It was not like that. Um, but I think you know, in the beginning of the show, you, Hike, said that it's taboo for Armenians to speak about this. And, and that's absolutely correct. The issues are cultural more. Um, so, so the statistics, yeah, I mean, they're there, but the cultural issues, and we all know um, just from our own experiences are there. So uh, generally speaking, when domestic violence is brought up or if someone complains about domestic violence, the very, first thing that happens is victim blaming. Mm -hmm. um, you know, what did you do wrong? Why, why is, is it something that you did that took, that could have prevented him from, you know, uh, hurting you? Or worse, you know, or they, or worse, these, these are, or worse, you deserve it. Worse, you deserve it. Or you worse, you yeah. deserve it. 
right. yeah I, and and just that by way of background you know i i was born in armenia um we came here when i was a kid back in 1987 um but i do you know so so, so I, i'm from that culture and, and i know what uh we do uh, another uh big thing is is that um when domestic violence is reported um and because of us armenians we have such strong family values and and uh us as a committee of the armenian bar association we seek to protect the um, the family values of our Armenians because uh, we live in America and we know you know what uh, 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 what what family values aren't there what happens to to a society so so it is our goal to maintain that um, however because of our family values um, you know. Uh, uh, a victim reporting domestic violence, uh, the officer that responds wants to try to reconcile. Oh, come on. I mean, you know, it's okay. It's just one time. Just go and let, let's see. You're a family. You're going to be, you're going to, you're going to be stronger together. And, and it goes up on the scale, the judiciary judges try to reconcile um and and in reconciling what they're really doing and is is they're saying that the abuser's conduct um you know it's not good but it's not so bad to uh it, for for us to punish him in any way mm -hmm. um so the issues are cultural and and we need to address those issues are there any existing laws in Armenia that protects victims of uh, domestic violence? Um, thank you for that question. Yes. The name of the law translated in English is the prevention of violence within the family, protection of victims of violence within the family, and restoration of peace in the family. And it was enacted in uh, December of 2017 uh, to some resistance. Um, and so, the language is there and our committee has been reviewing uh, the existing law um, looking at other analysis of this existing law to find whether there are shortcomings which we have found there to be and um, we are working towards improving the existing law by um, drafting what they call a white paper to propose um, amendments to the existing law and I, I want to go into some of the shortcomings that are high priority to us. Um, uh, and uh, Anahid and Ruben, uh, feel free to chime in if, if you want. Uh, so some of the high priority items for us um, within the existing law is that there is uh, currently a temporary insanity defense uh, to domestic violence. And basically the way that uh, the, the law is written right now means that if a murder of a spouse is committed in a state of sudden insanity caused by the action or the inaction of the victim, that is a defense to domestic violence. And that is troublesome because as anybody can understand, the victim cannot be blamed. And some of the actions or inactions that form this defense um, that the blaming the victim include immorality um, or heavy insults. And so you can imagine that um, if um, a victim has been accused of unfaithfulness, uh, the perpetrator of domestic violence can use that as an excuse for committing domestic violence. And now the victim and her actions are on trial rather than the perpetrator of the violence. Um, that's of high priority to us right now to um, propose a white paper to make amendments to that defense. Um, another uh, priority for us um, is um, the, the law allows for the police to um, give a warning when they are first called out to a home for domestic violence. And uh, that has posed uh, problems in the real world where um, a victim calls the police, the police arrive, and the law doesn't uh, currently um, 
require any action um, for the severity of the domestic violence. And so um, if the police in their discretion want to give a warning to the perpetrator, they're allowed to do that. And then what happens when the police leave and the victim is left there with the perpetrator? And, um, you know, in the real world, this results in the second act of domestic violence being a lot more severe because now she's called the police. The police have just, you know, given a warning and walked away, and now she's in real trouble. Um, other areas of shortcoming that we intend to address are that there are no interim custody and visitation for children um, or ability to get orders such as those uh, when emergency intervention occurs. So let's say that the victim calls the police and the police come over and um, they, they um, decide that um, maybe there is a temporary domestic violence restraining order that should be issued. There are no uh, interim measures to protect the children. So a perpetrator of violence may have access to the children and then may commit acts of domestic violence against the children. In the US, we have such uh, um, interim orders available for the protection of the children. That's missing from the current law. Um, and another one, uh, and there's a lot, but I'll, I'll conclude with this fourth one. Um, uh, if there is a criminal conviction of domestic violence, the protective orders um, go away. And we think that that's um, inappropriate because you know, we, we can't guarantee how long um, or if at all a, a jail sentence might be for the conviction of domestic violence and what happens when the perpetrator is released. Um, the protections should stay there to protect the victims. So we're looking deeply into um, the, the current existing um, statutes and working together as a committee um, to write up a white paper and to propose changes and hopefully to have um, somebody who will uh, take the spear um, and go into parliament to make these changes happen. Anait, I have a question for you. So the committee is doing its work in the United States um, as, um, as Marina described, uh, studying the laws, seeing the shortcomings of the laws, making recommendations, um, but none of it really has teeth until it's enacted into law, if I'm correct. How do you work to make that happen? How do you work with Armenian government, legislative body? How do you make your recommendations um, make a real difference in the lives of these victims? Yeah, thanks for that question. So um, as, as Marina mentioned, um, we actively looking to see parliamentarians who will be able to champion this law, you know, and really be able to, uh, you know, take the necessary steps to have it considered. Um, and uh, it, it's not going to be easy. And, and uh, as you mentioned, uh, you know, earlier, you know, this is a, a difficult time politically for Armenia, but we are really hoping that we find the right people uh, who can, um, who, who can really help uh, push this, uh, the, you know, the amendments that uh, we are uh, suggesting through, because it's very important. Uh, if, if, if these changes are not made and we, what we, uh, what we identified are the most egregious shortcomings in the law um, you know so what we're hoping is this is a first step but um, and and you know if these changes uh, will be uh, enacted hopefully there will be more changes uh, to come but but uh, but this is the first step um, and sort of the legal aspect if you will of our work we do also have other specific activities uh, concerning raising awareness about domestic violence. So let me, let me follow okay. up on that. Let me follow up on that uh, point. Um, first of all, can you give us an example of an outreach to communities, to local communities? And you know, second part of my question, how do you overcome this taboo? I think that's you know, probably one of the most fundamental challenges that you must be facing. How do you make let's say a, a, a woman, a wife, a member of the family, a member of the community to, for lack of a better word, break alliance and come out to you and say, you know, this is what happened to me, I need help. 
Right. So over the last year and a half, we have learned a great deal from activists who are working on the front lines. Uh, we are uh, supporting existing projects of organizations like the Women's Support Center, um, uh, which is the sort of preeminent organization uh, that has uh, shelters throughout uh, Armenia and, and assist uh, women um, from from beginning uh, uh, to to end when they're able to you know sort of uh, get back on their feet again, and um, and so and we're trying to also develop new programs to uh, address issues such as you know fostering uh, healthy relationships, um, addressing mental health issues that fuel domestic violence. Um, in the United States, because you know the domestic violence program is not limit, uh, the problem is not limited to Armenia. It this certainly exists in the diaspora. Uh, we have actually reached out to clergy who are taking this issue very seriously, and we are working to see uh, uh, to develop programs and 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 outreach. Specifically, one example is to ensure that clergy receive training so that they can assist. Uh, families in crisis. And we're also organizing um, events and fundraisers to actively engage, uh, engage people of all ages to support these initiatives. But certainly the, uh, you know, the uh, activists on the ground are the ones who are mo best equipped to help uh, the women who are uh, you know, trying to uh, escape violence, and it's not easy. They 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 have a hard time because a lot of the women are very afraid. You know, they 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 may not want to leave the home. They're afraid about what's going to happen to their children. So this is, uh, you know, our work is multi-layered, and it's going to take years and years to, you know, not only uh, raise awareness about the problem, but also try to make it easier for these women to be able to escape um, their abusive home, have a law that will protect them so that they are not worried that they're, so they can make sure that their children are safe. So they are not uh, reluctant to leave the home and, and uh, take the step that they need to, uh, to escape violence and have a healthy life. Yeah. Right. Can I just add something? Okay. So the way that we intend on changing things is one, of course, attacking um, the law that is, is very weak at, at this stage. Um, but like I said before, the issues, and, and all of us recognize it, are cultural. Um, so I think uh, the understanding must be that domestic violence, yes, it's, it's bad to um, uh, uh, to commit violence against any human being, right? Um, but the effect of domestic violence is, is far reaching um, because the child that, uh, th that, that sees the violence will ultimately either get into a relationship where they are hurt by their significant other or, or other, or they get into a relationship where they're actually perpetrating the violence. Um, and, and because of the cyclical relationship of domestic violence, it has a real impact on the, the society's um, GDP. Um, economically, it is, it, it, it's devastating to a country and that is why it is just so important um, for our country, our Armenia to, to be stronger. And, and, and that is the purpose of this group. It, it's, it's to empower our people, our brothers and sisters out there in Armenia. Yeah. Marina, would you I, like to I, add something? Yeah, I was going to add that, um, Anayat and Ruben covered this really well. So awareness is, uh, key to bringing an end to or, or minimizing domestic violence in Armenia. Awareness of what's available to you, what you are capable of doing with the help of uh, authorities and uh, NGOs uh, like, um, or the Women's uh, Support Center. Um, changing the laws to 
better protect uh, victims is also key. But what I recall um, Armin Barr doing even before our committee was formed in the infancy of, of our program was um, also uh, sending training. I recall, um, I can't remember the, the, the year, but it was the summertime and we were able to send a Glendale Police Department officer um, and a wow. judge to train um, the people in Armenia, including the, shelter, the, the people who work at the Women's Support Center and the shelter and also police officers, I believe, in how to respond to and deal with domestic violence. So as Anahit said, it's several layers. Our work involves several layers and awareness, improving of laws, uh, training, um, and supporting other organizations. Um, when we were talking, I, I wanted to give a shout out on this program to um, this women-owned um, and operated um, startup uh, who created uh, the Safe You app. Um, which right. is an incredible app, uh, which victims can install on their phones. And it has um, functions such as uh, automatic recording and automatic notice being sent to your support people and authorities if you're, uh, you know, subject to uh, domestic right. violence at the moment. And so th when we interviewed or spoke to the lady who created uh, the program, the way she was describing how the app works, it could be a real lifesaver. And it has, it has actually it has worked been. in practice. How can a community, Armenian, New York, New Jersey, in our case, because that's where the show is, uh, get involved? How can they help? Well, there's so much the diaspora can do. We actually have a subcommittee that is specifically focused on programs and outreach. Um, but I'm gonna give some ideas. One is you know, spreading the word about domestic violence in Armenia on social media, by sharing articles and posts by organizations that are working on the ground. So for example, there was an article in Forbes about the Safe You app that Marina just mentioned. Uh, and sharing posts by the Women's Support Center and Quidigs. Uh, this is very important because each time you share it, people learn more and more about the, the problem. Uh, another thing is organizing educational programs. And that also includes age appropriate projects with, with children at uh, Armenian day schools or Saturday or Sunday schools uh, to help foster healthy relationships. You know, the um, combating uh, you know, domestic violence, as uh, we've all mentioned, is, is a multi-layered process. So it's very important to teach kids at a young age what healthy relationships uh, look like. Another is uh, organizing fundraisers. Uh, you, you know, one idea is having a walk or a run uh, that coincides with Mother's Day and Father's Day. You know, men have to be a part of the solution to this, um, uh, to this problem. And you can also organize uh, programs on uh, months that coincide with domestic violence awareness. So for example, October is coming. That happens to be Domestic Violence Awareness Month in the United States. April is Sexual Violence Awareness Month. So there, there's a lot uh, that, that can be done um, by the community. Uh, and, and I hope uh, that each community will, will consider doing one or two programs. Uh, and, and I think uh, collectively that will help make a difference. Okay, this will do it. Thank you very much, everyone. It was an uh, incredibly informative uh, and important conversation. And I also call for our audience to get involved. Uh, we will provide a link to the website where people can get in touch with this initiative. Uh, and once again, thank you very much and look forward to having you on the show again to see uh, how you're making the progress on this topic. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you so much.